Welcome everybody to Very Important Geeks, where today we're gonna to be doing a build and first impressions of the Ergodox EZ. And before we get started today, I'd like to thank everybody for the 330 plus subs already. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell so you know when I come out with more nonsense. Okay, so let's talk about this thing. What is it? It's an Ergodox EZ, a split design ortholinear ergonomic keyboard. So what does that mean? Well, obviously it's a split design because it comes in two separate halves. And it's ortholinear, which means that the key rows are not staggered like in a traditional layout. Instead, they're lined up so that the, all the keys are in columns so that your fingers don't have to stretch left and right to hit the other key. It just simply needs to go up and down. Now the Ergodox comes with a hot swappable RGB PCB and there are no stabs on this unit because no key is larger than 2U. So that's one less thing you have to worry about. You also have the option of getting their tilt and tent kit, which adds these extra metallic legs that let you pose these in various ways. Popular poses include the Jade Rabbit, the Kamehameha, the Almighty Push, and the ever popular United States of Smash. Now included in the box, you're gonna get TRS cables to connect both the halves together and a USB mini to USB-A cable. As an option, you can also order wrist rests that are specifically made for the Ergodox. The board comes in black or white variants and you can get printed or blank keycaps. Now the keycaps are gonna come in a DSA profile, which means that each key of a certain size, 1U, 1.75U, 2U, they're all gonna have the same profile. This allows you to move any key anywhere on the board without having to worry. And one of the biggest draws about this keyboard is that it's fully programmable through QMK or their Oryx graphical configurator tool. It also offers up to 32 layers of custom keys. So with that out of the way, let's get this thing built. I am not the best typer in the world. I type anywhere on average between 90 and 100 words per minute. When I switched to this, it dropped all the way down to as low as 12, 17, 22%. And over a couple of hours, I managed to work my way back up to 40 or so percent. 
So first impressions after having finished the build. This is a very eye-catching, unique looking keyboard, and it certainly makes a statement. I have the DSA Vital Bloom keycaps on this because it is for my wife, and it just makes the keys a little more colorful, and it pops out from the black keyboard base a little bit. And you just feel cool using it, like you're hacking into something you probably shouldn't be hacking into. The type of person that uses this board probably drinks their coffee from a bunch of old PCBs soldered together. Their idea of an outdoor activity is watching a documentary about the moon landing. And they probably go by Steven instead of Steve. Steve. Now, despite the fact that the keyboard is split up into two halves, it does take up a little bit more room than you would think. Now, because of the little peninsula of thumb keys here, you can't actually put the two halves cleanly together. So you're gonna have this space in the middle of your desk. And if you're adding the wrist rest, it makes the keyboard a little bit deeper overall as well. Now, the plastic body is okay. I mean, it's a plastic body. I wish they would have had an aluminum option, but what can you do? I will say that the plastic body does show fingerprints and stuff really well, so that's something to watch out for. Now, if you opt for the tilting legs for the kit, these legs are gonna be ratcheting by default, so they make a nice, satisfying little click when you move them around. And because it's got two gears, it makes it a little sturdier. It also comes with washers to put in between the teeth so that you get a linear, more stepless motion. Though I find out that if you push too hard on it, those tend to slip a little bit easier. So I initially had the washers on, but I took them off because now with the little teeth, it's very hard to move this around. The optional wrist rests feel pretty good. They're very hefty, very well made. Uh, they're nice and solid. I think they're a silicone rubber. The only downside is that they collect skin cells and dirt and dust really easily, but uh, you can easily wash them off, but it will be a constant problem. Now you don't have the option for a standalone plate or different plate material because the plate is actually just part of the top and it's the same sort of plasticky plate that the whole top is made out of. Not the best feeling in the world, but it is what it is. Sadly, the cables that come with this for the amount of money you spend are pretty terrible. I mean, look at this. This is your pretty generic USB mini to USB A six foot cable. And for the amount of money that you spend, you really could have gone with at least a USB-C, maybe a nice braided cable, a coiled cable option would have been cool. Cause then you also have to connect both of these with this TRRS cable. And look at how long this is. This is probably three, three feet long. Who, who types like this? Fortunately, you can get a shorter cable off of Amazon. I am switching from a traditional keyboard layout full on into both ortholinear and split keyboard. So that was, it took me a really long time to get a grasp on all of that. And the default layout that comes with this is pretty garbage. I would suggest that if you get this, go ahead and make a new layout. They have a whole bunch of different layouts on the website to choose from, so you can look through some if you want. What I did is I tried to remap all the keys to be as close to a traditional configuration as I could to minimize having to relearn where new things are. Um, I couldn't remap 100% of the keys to be totally correct, uh, probably 95%. There are a few things like the apostrophe that are in an odd place, but over time, you will learn to work with it. After a couple of rounds, just go ahead and say that that is it, and then just let muscle memory take over. At some point, you are just gonna have to spend time and let your arms and your mind get used to the new configuration, and it will. Also, it just struck me that this is kind of a really good keyboard for gaming. If you're mostly like a left-hand keyboarder and right-hand mouser and you don't need the entire keyboard, you can set up a whole layer of nothing but game dedicated controls. You've got a whole bunch of special keys. You can map a bunch of different key bindings to hot keys. I think this would be really good. If you already use sort of a gaming pad, this will also work. And now you don't have to have a separate gaming pad and a keyboard. It's a, all one thing. So even though it's not mine, would I consider getting one for myself? But after a couple hours, I was pretty satisfied with being able to do normal day-to-day -day stuff. Over time, I expect that to get better. And I think it's okay enough for me that I probably would. In the future, I would definitely entertain getting one of these. If you guys happen to know of any other split keyboards that also do the ergonomic sort of tilty angle thing, go ahead and drop a comment below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead, drop a like, drop a sub, hit that notification bell, support me on Patreon if you can. And until next time, geek out.
kidding me?